Building self-trust starts the moment you decide to stop abandoning yourself. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. If you're new here, welcome. Here on this channel, we talk about self-love, mindset mastery, and building unshakable self-confidence. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. Now, let's get into the ultimate step-by-step -step guide on how to trust yourself. Step number one is to find the root cause for not trusting yourself. Not trusting yourself always comes from past trauma. So in order to get to the practical tips, we need to start with the root cause first. As someone who struggled with self-trust for many years, I can tell you from my personal experience that my reason for not trusting myself was deeply rooted in being disconnected from my body, which was a coping mechanism I developed growing up to protect myself. For you, the reason for not trusting yourself might be different. You may have experienced some form of abuse and you couldn't defend yourself, so you internalize the belief that you don't deserve your own trust. Another possible reason for not trusting yourself might be growing up in a codependent family. When all decisions someone makes influence all other parties to the point of changing their lives, it might be a sign that these relationships are not healthy. Many codependent parents involve themselves into their children's lives to the point of telling them what to wear, what to go, what to do. That can also lead to lack of self-trust, since the child is not able to think for themselves and develop autonomy. If codependency is something that you would like to work on, watch my video on how to overcome codependency after this one. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Now, I want to help you get a step further. So here are some introspective questions you can ask yourself to determine the root cause for not trusting yourself. 1. What does self-trust mean to me? 2. Have I experienced judgment or criticism when I tried to voice my opinion growing up? 3. Did someone tell me frequently that I was wrong or bad? 4. Did I get punished for doing what I thought was right? 5. Were my views of the world different from those of other people? 6. Did I suppress my needs to meet someone else's needs instead? You can spend a few minutes journaling and then move to step number 2, which is to start small. Sometimes we don't trust ourselves because we're trying to tackle too many things at once. Then we get overwhelmed and abandon the commitments we made to ourselves. So I want you to start small. Here's how you can do that. Let's say you don't trust yourself to make the right decision. So you often ask your friends to help out. In this case, one small step you can take towards trusting yourself is that next time you feel like asking someone else for their opinion or you start looking things up on YouTube or Google, you just try to figure it out yourself. When we're talking about building self-trust, you need to learn to sit down and listen to yourself. Start small. Don't do this exercise while you're driving. Sit down somewhere where you know you won't be disturbed and close your eyes. Take a few deep breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Then ask yourself some questions and let yourself intuitively answer each one of them. 1. If a friend came to me with this problem, what would I advise them to do? 2. What would this look like if it was easy? 3. What small step can I take today to start trusting myself? Another example of starting small is to trust yourself to say the right thing next time you're in a heated argument. Now, if you're used to overreacting due to having intense emotions, a great start could be to trust your judgment when talking to a friend. You can then move on to a family member and so on. The more evidence you collect that you can be trustworthy, the easier it will be to reframe the way you see yourself. Which actually leads me to step number three. Become aware of your thoughts. Building self-trust has a lot to do with detaching yourself from the never-ending mind chatter. One of the simplest ways to become more self-aware is to watch your thoughts from a distance. You can try meditation, mindfulness techniques, or grounding exercises for anxiety. I've already made an entire free playlist that you can check out after watching this video. I will leave a link to it in the description box below. Now let's go back to becoming aware of your most common thinking patterns. What we need to focus on here is the link between your thoughts and not trusting yourself. When you think about it, self-trust is just a concept. It's a story in your mind that you've repeated way too many times to the point of turning it into a belief that you have about yourself, which means that you can change it as long as you know how to reframe the belief that you can't be trusted. You often hear me talk about one of my favorite CBT tools, which is the automatic thought record. It's all about tracking the link between your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors so that you can reframe the beliefs that no longer serve you. I've made a free copy of it, so you can download it by clicking the link in the description box below or visiting bit.ly slash thoughtrecord2. But for the purposes of this video, let's see what that would look like in the case of not trusting yourself. You might be having thoughts like, I can't do this. I need someone else to tell me what to do. I won't make it on my own, etc. 
This could lead to all sorts of emotions, sadness, frustration, fear, maybe even anger. And the behaviors you engage in might be binging Netflix, eating junk food, or constantly consuming content to alleviate the pain of not trusting yourself. Once you're aware of the behaviors that you engage in, you can move on to the last step of reframing your mindset, which is to choose an alternative behavior. In this case, next time you feel sad, frustrated, or angry, you may decide to sit with that emotion and let the sensations pass through your body. The more aware you become of your thoughts and catch them before they start spiraling into negative emotions, the easier it will be to start trusting yourself. Step number four is to get out of your head and into your body. Now, I want to explore three ways that you can get out of your head and into your body. The first thing you can do when you notice that you're too involved in your own storylines is to do jumping jacks. Even jumping just 10 times will give you the chance to stop thinking and start feeling what's happening inside your body. Another great way to get out of your head and into your body is the 5-4-3-2-1 technique. Here's what it is and how you can try it out for yourself. Acknowledge five things you can see around you, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Now, the third way to get out of your head and into your body is to try out the 478 technique. Here's what it is and how you can do it. Breathe in for four seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, and breathe out for eight seconds. What I recommend for beginners is to do 10 deep breaths and gradually increase the number as you become more comfortable with it. Another added bonus is that you're actually activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and digest system, and you're getting out of your sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight, flight, or freeze system. But we'll talk more about that in another video. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, what does getting out of my head and into my body has to do with not trusting myself? The truth is that self-abandonment often starts with having negative thoughts and beliefs about yourself, which leads to prioritizing other people's needs before your own. And before you know it, you stop trusting yourself, because every single time you do, you let yourself down. Which actually leads me to the next step on how to trust yourself, which is to prove to yourself that you're trustworthy. Trusting yourself is directly linked to knowing yourself and being able to focus on your strengths instead of your weaknesses. When you think about it, self-trust is just a concept, but it plays a huge role when it comes to making even the most mundane daily decisions. Here's how you can prove to yourself that you're trustworthy. By collecting evidence. I want you to journal using the following five questions. 1. What are the top three things that I like about myself? 2. Have I faced a difficult problem before and solved it on my own? What did I do? And how did I feel after I found the solution? 3. Do people come to me for advice and how do I help them? 4. What skills do I have and how can I use them? 5. What will my life look like if I started trusting myself? These journaling questions are just the tip of the iceberg, but I think they're a good start when it comes to focusing on your strengths and taking the first steps toward developing self-trust. Now, if you want more advanced techniques, make sure to check out the Self-Love Toolkit. It is my proven step-by-step -step framework that will show you exactly how to love and trust yourself unconditionally. If you want to learn more and get your hands on some exclusive bonuses, click the first link in the description box below or head over to www.selflovetoolkit.com. Now, when it comes to building self-trust, feeling comfortable being alone is a crucial step in this process. So if you want to learn how to enjoy your own company, make sure to check out this video next. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that video.